Today is a feast day of Saint Cerelia, the patron saint of work collectives. She lived in 5th century Syria and was martyred when the Visigoths raided the fish sauce factory she worked in. Just before their leader, Gunfobert, was going to kill the other women and men who worked there, she prayed and all the arrows and javelins were turned into kestrels. Gunfobert's son, Woodoville, put her in a vat of fish carcasses with a millstone tied to her feet, but she kept floating to the top. Each time Cerelia surfaced, an angel would appear, blowing a trumpet, singing, Glory to the Most High! But the pagans continued stiff-necked in their unbelief, throwing missiles, despising the Most High, calling on the demons of their fathers. At sunset, Cerelia said, Lord, forgive them. Their mail coats turned into priestly vestments, and she gave up to the ghost. Gunfobert went on a 30-day fast after this miracle and traveled to Egypt, where he was baptized by St. Cyprian. With his new name of Polymopher, he defended the Catholics from the Arians who conspired with Hypatia, the last Alexandrian librarian, to massacre the followers of righteousness. His son, Widovia, lived on a pillar outside Smyrna, preaching the gospel to the Huns, Sogandians, and Simbri, who besieged the town. When the mass barbarian army refused to leave, God sent them a plague. The leaders of a pagan horde asked him, Woodovia, to beg his God for forgiveness, which he agreed to do if they would lift the siege. During the two-year siege of Smyrna, Woodovia prayed to Saint Cerelia, and through her intercession with a divine father, a flock of kestrels carried venison into the city every day. Mice brought cheese to the inhabitants every night. This is why Saint Woodovia is a patron saint of country mice and cheesemongers. One day Saint Woodovia had a dream that a man crucified upside down got off his cross and told him to preach to the puffins. Saint Woodovia grieved in his heart, which was full of doubting. Then the Holy Spirit smote him with dumbness and piles for two days for his littleness of faith. After these two days had he traveled and brought the good news to the puffins, lo and behold, the puffins carried him to the town of Gao, where the Tuaregs traded salt for gold with a Bambara, those who call themselves children of a crocodile. Verily, St. Woodovia spoke the good news about the man Jesus, and their king, Bulubemba, listened favorably. But Diallo, the Nestorian, said he spoke with unclean lips and would deliver the children of a crocodile into the hands of the Tuaregs. So it came to pass that St. Woodovia was sealed in a hut till he died. His skin was taken and used to build a war drum for Cater, one mighty and strong. Cater, the most illustrious warrior, whose spear was the glory of Bulubemba. One day after Bulubemba had died, his son Keita fought Fama Kulubali, the hunter of javelins. Keita's war drum spoke to him, telling him the good news and the sign by which he should conquer. Keita painted the cross on his mail coat and had a cross tattooed on his face, according to the fashion of his country. In combat, he said, by the man Jesus and the Lamb of God, I smite thee, and cleft Fama Kulubali's head in twain. After his victory, Keita preached the gospel to his people, but they said, Our fathers were children of a crocodile, our mothers were daughters of the egret. Your abominations call for your blood to be cleansed with salt. So they opened his belly and washed it with salt, but he did not cease to cry out, all praise is due to the man Jesus and his divine father, whose grace is the Holy Spirit. Hearing this, the pagans did cut out his tongue 
but his great war drum spoke in his voice. Malinka, his brother, full of jealousy for the kingship, burned a drum and threw Keita into the river Quara, which the Berbers call River of Rivers. Keita made the sign of a cross and gave up the ghost. In 684, Pope Fleersant made Keita the patron saint of talking drums and sucking chest wounds.